Boy P, he the beats on the drive. Swag. Yes. I say that right, Cold Boy P? Yes. Cold Boy P. Right here. Swag. You I got him. So what's a good word, man? Um, everything, man. What's not like to do right now? Like, I'm just trying to, you know, stay focused on working and stay busy. Okay, but first let's talk about swag. Can you break that down for those who don't know? I know most do, but there may be one or two who don't know. So. Okay, you know, some people like, oh. Like they go Google swag or swag, how I would say it, and they're like, oh, that's some type of um, um, drug or something like that. I'm like, no, it is like, yeah, the word, but it's at the end of the day, swag is what you present yourself like swag, like your aura, your you, you know, the way you carry yourself. You know, ah. it, it could be whatever, you know, what I mean, like. The way you say your words, you know what I mean? The way you, just the whole concept of you being a person like, ah, oh, this is me, this is what I bring to the table. This is my swag. So I got I got a question for you, I got a trick question in a way. Tell me and tell, tell the viewers who Peter Beats is and then tell us who Coke Boy P is. All right, Peter Beats is, you know, Young K. Verdian, kid from Upham's Corner, you know what I mean, that grew up in the music scene. Like, my father, you know, was, a, was and is a musician, K. Verdian musician, one of, you know, the top best, like, he's the second best in K. Bird right now. Uh, long story short, the best mess with my father, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, he plays a violin, mm. guitar, ukulele, um, trumpets, like, he sings, like, he does everything, but he didn't pick up the piano, so when I was seven, he put me in piano school. Gotcha. So he gave me that when I was seven, eight, nine, till I was like 11, and then, by then, you know, I'm in middle school, you know, I'm hearing kids rapping, and you know, I get into the, you know, the whole rap scene of, you know, I want to make beats because I'm, I'm playing the piano. I'm playing piano over songs that I'm already hearing. Mm. So I'm like, damn, like if I could just do this with no problem, I'm playing the same thing they're playing, I want to make my own stuff. So I started, you know, still playing with the songs that I was playing, but I was adding my own sound. Okay. Our own little twist to it instead of, you know, just copying the same thing they're playing. Okay, okay. So then they started coming to the point where, food, no, not Fruit of Leaves, before Fruit of Leaves, before the computer, you know, I used to record my father tape deck to tape deck. Like, so I come from that era, you know what I'm saying? I was a young, but that's only because I was a young and hang, hanging with the older heads. This is the producer, okay. engineer, you know, 
and Coco P is, you know, the rapper okay. slash producer because I still, I don't just rap and not use my producer expertise when, you know what I'm saying, when I'm rapping. Because I, like, I've recorded on mad people's beats that I usually record on my beats because I, I understand my flow and I understand where certain instruments need to be to make the vocals pop. Okay. You, like, if you're recording somebody, even if they're not signed to you or they're not your artist, yep. it's kind of like they're your artist because you don't want to sit there and let things come out of your studio sounding all crazy. Right. So right. you want, sure. like, you build that marriage with that person. You build the sound, like, finding his level, like, oh, I know how he likes it. Right, uh -huh. right, right. This is him. This is how, you know, when you hear a Wiz Khalifa or a Jay-Z song, you say, oh, this, like, you know it's them before he, he, he read it, like, or this sounds like a Wiz Khalifa. Right. Or this sounds like a 50 Cent beat. Right. Before you would even hear them rap. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. I'm building that for these artists. I'm not building, like, making beats is cool, you know, recording is cool, but it's about making those two join. You know what I'm saying? Is there anybody in particular that you want to produce for? Uh, like, oh, plenty, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is time, if time comes for some people and time doesn't, sometimes it doesn't work out for people. Like, I've worked with many big artists and yeah. some of the ones that I really wanted to work with, yeah. I didn't get a chance to yet. But some of the ones that I, but I've also had some of the ones that I really wanted to work with, I've worked with, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've worked with R. Kelly, Fabulous, Fat Joe, Busta Rhymes. Um, I'm currently working with French Montana. I'm under his, you know, the Cold Boys right now, which, you know, he's giving me the name, like, you know what I'm saying, like, to run with. You know I mean? Okay. He's he telling me, like, yo, uh, like, this little nigga remind me of bro. So I rap, I can talk to him. Yeah, okay. Producers and rappers, they can't really click and talk and have a conversation that a rapper and a rapper would have. Gotcha. And a producer and a producer would have that connection and have the, yeah, yeah. Um, Twitter, uh, That's they talking. That's a good point. That's a very good point. So me rapping, I get to understand where the rapper's coming from. Like, yo, I want this. I want the beat to break the head. When I say this, uh-uh, I understand what he's saying. Not just saying or break it down. Blah, blah, blah. Like, so know, the name Coke Boy Pete, is that... What did it originate once you, once you build a relationship with Frenchman Montana? Yeah, or? basically, he basically gave me the Cowboy Pete because he's like, oh, Pharrell, you remind me of him? So it's ah, like okay. Skateboard okay. Pete. Skateboard Pete. Okay, I got you. Pharrell, sure. that's what he goes by, like his art yeah. video or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. So basically, he gave me that. And then, you know, but before I, I even got a chance to, you know, get that situation with French and, you know, Coke Boys and under the Coke Boys, we also got CCG, which is um, my one of the Coke Boys artists, which is Coke Boy Brock. Okay. You know, he got CCG. Then you got Coke Boy Drew Pop. He got his his own label, which is GPK. GPK. Okay. Then Where you, they from? Where they from? They from New York. New York. Okay. French Montana's head, which is um, Tremont. Tremont. Uh, okay. Like okay. that. Yeah. Um, Tremont, Fairmont. Um, like all, like basically the Bronx. So I got my own thing too, which is Flight Squad. Flight Squad, okay. Like you know, what I'm saying my production label is Audio Trafficking. You know, we traffic in this audio, audio trafficking music. You know what I mean? So which would be short for ATM. How do they reach you? Can any you produce for anybody? Is it like? How can they reach me? Yeah. You can um, go on my Instagram, which would be Coke Boy P. Straight up, no space, no underscore, just Coke Boy P. Or you can hit, my, um, hit, hit me up. You can call me, like, you know what I mean? I'm not no bougie ass nigga. Like, um, straight up, you can call me, you can book me for shows, you can, you know, get me for beat battles, performances, if you want to buy beats, if you want to do. Features. Let me ask you this, like, so I'm gonna throw a name out at you, and besides, rest in peace, we pay homage, obviously. Um, what comes to your mind when I when I say the name Deuce Banger? Like Deuce Banger, like R.P. Deuce Banger, like that's my little nigga, like you know what I mean, like 
this is my little brother. Like, I've known Deuce Banger just as long as I've known my sister's boyfriend because I met him through him, mm. I, which, you know, RIP to him. He yeah. died too, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And That's a piece, man. Which is Jidu, you know, RIP Jidu. Like, he, he introduced me to Deuce Banger. But actually, before Deuce Banger, my sister's boyfriend introduced me to Boss Young, which is Deuce Banger's older cousin. Okay. So okay. I was producing Mad Beats with Boss Young, and Deuce Banger was just like me. He would rap and make beats. And make beats, okay. But before he was making beats, he he was rapping with Boss, right there, alongside with Boss. So I'm making eight beats. It was three of them. Deuce Banger, Franchisee, and um, Boss Young. But I was mostly producing for Boss Youngin because, like, I met him first and we was, like, we was connecting. Yeah. And then I, you know, we put it together, them three, and I was making the beats, recording it. Okay. Deuce actually was messing with French before I was messing with French. Mm, He's okay. the one that bring him around. So, okay. basically, I would have, no bullshit, I would have never met French personally if it, it wasn't, wasn't because of Deuce. Like... I wouldn't want somebody to switch up on me, so why would I do it to somebody else? Right, know? right. So I keep everybody around me that I've been messing with. You know okay, I mean? okay. You know, I still mess with Russia, you know, Mass Pipe Miles, Smoke okay. Bolger, um, Smoke Bolger, freaking the whole Russia team, you know, Marky, Hashish, you know what I'm saying? The whole. Down the line, bang, Sean Hines. Sean I can sit here and name mad niggas out of that whole camp. Then I, you know, I mess with the mission heads. I mess with the point. I mess with the A. I mess with everybody. Everybody that's knows that. Up. And that's what people love about me. I, I'm up. humble. I'm not going to come to your hood and, you know, and and you're going to treat me different because I'm recording these other dudes that, you right, know, right, we either right. got beef with or something like that. I keep it humble. And I, they know I'm about to do.